Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video we are going to do quite something different. We are going to check out a game that I made, like I think it was a year ago. I will showcase it and then I will open up the game in Roblox Studio and check out how good or bad my code actually was. I am pretty excited let's go so the game is called rpg test realm so let me first give you guys a little bit of a backstory when i created this game i was a really big fan of dungeon quest rumble quest treasure quest all the dungeon crawler games and what i wanted to do is take a new look at the genre and see how can i improve the dungeon format so the first thing I made was the ability to make three save slots. So you can see I got like this warrior guy I made, this archer guy and this mage. So for this demonstration, let's take the warrior and delete it. It will restart the menu and we can see that we can start a new save file. So when we do that, we get prompted with what class we want to pick. So for this example, we're going to go pick the warrior and you get in the character customization. So as you can see, I never locked the camera, which is really annoying. I should really fix that one day. But what you could do is you could choose between two hairstyles, which is this more male hairstyle and this more female hairstyle. Let's take the female hairstyle because I did a lot more work into it. And we can change the color over here to whatever we want. So let's make I don't know, let's make it pink. Then we can also change the eyes, which also have an eye color change. So we can also make these like purplish and we can do male eyes or female eyes. And then you can make your character. So the shirt color, let's make him wet. And you can change the skin color to whatever you want. You can even make yourself blue or red. So when after you uh, press play, you can see that your character is saved in the menu so when we go to mage you can see his mage character but when we go back to slot one you can see oh it's a character i made and we can click play and it will teleport us to the next stage which i made so this was all still pretty early in development and i didn't really know what i wanted to do but one thing that i knew is that i wanted the camera from the top and that your character would look at your mouse position so what we can do now is we can go to the inventory and you see a bunch of different test items that I made. So we got a sword, which we can wear because we are a warrior and it goes on our back. And this was a temporary uh, frame to show you, oh, you equipped it. But this is a bow. And because we are the wrong class, we can't equip a bow. But what we can equip is this helmet. I will unequip it now because I like the hair. But we can equip the chest plate which gives us more damage and the pants which gives us more damage once again when you click on a mage item you can't wear it there are also spells like this super flame scale which i can't use as a warrior but as a warrior i can use the fireball so we equip the fireball and now we have a lot more character i also planned on doing cosmetics but i never came that far in development so we can see our character changed and we can teleport to the dungeon. So I am super proud at this because it randomly generates the dungeon. So we can uh, hit to, to attack and we can press the Q key to, uh, well, that's still broken. That sucks. So the fireball is still broken, unfortunately. And like every time you, you get in a new room, the, the camera follows you to the new room and you have to fight the enemy over there. So let's say we kill this enemy and the door opens. And when we go to the next door, there are more enemies. So we have like this wet enemy, so which you can kill. And we also got this enemy and the giant. And they don't attack us yet because once again, I didn't add that in. So we kill that enemy and we can go to the next stage. And it just keeps randomizing uh, dungeons. So of course, every class that I made has different abilities. So we are on the mage right now, 
and the mage when you click shoots a slime ball and I made it that every time you click it it comes from the left side and the right side on the left side and the right side just because I wanted to make the mage a lot more fluid than just a straight uh, ball forward as you can see the particles and even the effect are still pretty early in development it's quite unfortunately that I never finished it because looking back at it it is actually quite fun so that's the mage which I really like but I do gotta say the archer is my favorite class that I ever made okay so here we are in the archer and the archer is my favorite class because I spent the longest time coding it so the cool thing is you can click with the archer and you fire an arrow and you can see that does no damage but when you hold the button you will see like this particle and you do more damage and the fun thing is you can hold it even longer so you can charge up charge up charge up boo, and you can just one shot so the archer class was meant to be uh, the boss killer so you get your party so one person would choose the mage which is really good at cleaning out the rooms and the other person would choose the archer that would basically do a lot of damage to uh, single target enemies which is also pretty important in games like these there was also this other test world that i made that basically is the exact same so you can pick for example the archer and this was the very first prototype that i made of the archer this one, instead of having the particle effects below him to show how far his bow is, uses a meter. And while I really like the meter because it's very visual, it really takes away the skill of the archer. Also, this is the first prototype of enemies that I made, which are slimes. And you can see I even drop items. Uh, also something which is really cool is that I made mounts. So I made this horse that I can make active. Then when we press the E key, you will get on the horse and also something that I made was the slime sledge which when I make that active will basically make this slime sledge and this would basically be the wear drop of slimes I can't believe I stopped this project because it is actually really cool and these were like the range enemies which would basically shoot like these great epic particles like I said, the wizard was different before and it basically shoot out like a straight line. Which also is pretty cool about this build is that every hero has a movement ability. So the wizard can teleport. The archer does a backflip to get away from danger. And the warrior does like a front flip to get away from the danger. I really liked this but I never implemented it in the final game. But now, let's take a look at the code that I actually used to write all this. Okay, so we arrived at the most important place, the dungeon. And now you're probably wondering, where is the dungeon? Because we can see the spawn and we can see this random block. And that's the cool thing, because every time you run the simulation, see, it will create its own dungeon every time. So we can win it again and whoop it created another dungeon this one is a pretty boring dungeon and we can we win it again it would lag spike a little bit and oh this dungeon is pretty cool you can go all the way up here so okay every time it creates a room it also creates one of those cameras so these are the position of all the cameras which it switches between uh, of course we have the doors and an enemy so inside every segment room there is spawns in which you can see uh, all the mob spawns and there is this enemy folder in which it places all the enemies so when this enemy folder gets empty it deletes the door and spawns two new enemies at these uh, blue blocks so when we go into the next room you can see the blue blocks and when I delete all the enemies out of the list new enemies spawn here the door opens and you can go to the next one and that is basically how it works uh, and at the end there was always this boss room which at this golden block a boss spawns which for now is a really big enemy so this is the script that basically generates the dungeon every time and what it basically does is it just creates a, a room which the rooms are located in a separate folder over here in segments you have boss room straight room so 
let us anti simulation and get all these rooms out of their package. So take all the rooms, place them in. So these are all the rooms that we can get. So, okay, let's see how it works. So this is a straight room and it has a couple of things. It has a block that marks the entry point and it marks a block uh, where it wants the new room to spawn. And of course the exit. So the exit is not that important. The most important thing is this block right here. Because that is where the entire room will spawn. Uh, on the other hand, for all the items, I use item data. So I create an array list where I use all the swords. I give it stats. I give it animations, level requirements, class requirements, all that stuff, which is pretty cool. Then, of course, in the character, you have uh, visuals. And in the visuals are basically all the hairs and the eyes that we have in the game. So... Those are these, which have a white hat for reference. And the hats also have this really small white hat to make sure every piece is at the same uh, place every time. So even though I never finished this game, I am still pretty proud of all the progress that I made in it. It's kind of a shame that I lost interest, but it's still something to look back at and something that I can say, Look, I built that. I know this video was very, very different from the stuff that I normally do. But I really hope you enjoyed nonetheless. I really wanted to show you guys what I made and what I worked on in the past. But anyway guys, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to join my Discord in the link in the description. If you like this video and want to see more, please hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.